All right, welcome everybody. This is Matt Duncan, co-founder and deputy director of Brackets for Good. Just wanted to thank you all for jumping on and joining us as we head into tournament week next week. Hard to believe that Brackets for Good 2018 tips off Friday, March 2nd at 8 p.m. We're thrilled to have you on board. Got a lot of ground to cover and we're ready to get started. So let's go ahead and begin. Uh, that is me, Matt Duncan. We also have Matt McIntyre, who is on our chat that will be answering questions. So if you can see the chat bubble um, in the join me menu, once selected, you can get in there, ask questions. He will be answering them as we go through the deck and presentation. A couple other notes. We will go ahead and record this or screencast this, make it publicly available on our highlights section in uh, on the Brackets for Good blog. So feel free to share that out. We'll publicly promote that as well once that goes live. Uh, a couple of things to note there. If you joined our orientation before, this is more or less a rehash of some of that information. There's certainly some new stuff that we're sharing from the National Pep Rally. But if you tuned into the pep rally, you were on the first orientation. I just want you all to be aware that we're going to cover similar content in the deck. And we just want you guys to know what's going to happen today. So with that, it's time to get moving. Uh, next to me is our lovely mascot, Champ, the most valuable philanthropist. And we created Champ last year as a representation of all philanthropy. We call ourselves the only sport for nonprofits. And every good sport, every good um, college sport, a lot of pro sports have mascots. And he represents philanthropy as a whole. So not just our mascot, but he's certainly yours as well. You've probably seen him on our website. You've seen him through our marketing channels if you're following us on social, even through email. Uh, he plays a big role here, and we just love having him represent all the good that you guys are doing in communities across the country. So I want to start off with rehashing a little bit of what 2017 was all about. And organizations just like yours all together raised $3.6 million through Brackets for Good and including a lot of the prize money that was donated as well from the corporate partners. Um, since our first tournament, dating back to 2012, we've averaged 30% new donors. Last year it was a little bit higher as we peaked closer to 32%. That's a stat that we're really proud of. As you may know, our mission is to help introduce and encourage people to participate in philanthropy. We've got a lot of new exciting ways to do that this year, and that's why we're thrilled to share some of the more updates that we have heading into 2018. Another stat that you'll notice is millennial donors. Uh, I believe they've been called the unicorns, but yes, they exist. They do give. Um, our platform tends to uh, cater a little bit more to that crowd. Uh, younger folks definitely are appreciative of being able to give online, do so quickly, and we're seeing that being represented in the donors that are participating. Much like you would anticipate, millennial donors are giving with more frequency but lesser dollar amounts, where the older generations are giving less frequently but with higher dollar amounts. So there's going to be a lot of fun information that we'll publish in the spectate view under each tournament. So you can go in and check out that data and, and search that data across all the different tournaments as well. Nonprofit views, as we said, we want to help encourage people, uh, help introduce individuals to nonprofits. Nonprofit views are related to stat sheets that are available on each one of your organizations. We've been promoting a video that was shared in Minnesota from um, Jeff, the executive director with the Twin Cities Kids in Need Resource Center, and he was highlighting some of their experiences last year and sharing the interest in learning about other competitors, other organizations that all have essentially the same goal. They're working to make Minnesota a stronger place for all, everyone to live, work, and play. And the stat sheet's a quick way for him to uh, and others to identify what your organization does, whether they uh, their values align, and from nonprofit to nonprofit, what kind of partnerships could exist beyond the tournament. So stat sheets are really important. We couldn't have said it better than Jeff said it a couple of 
weeks ago in the Twin Cities, um, but please take time to fill that out. That's a way that a lot of people are learning about your organization for the very first time. Also, 350 hours were dedicated to the nonprofit training. Hopefully, you found the nonprofit locker room. I also hope that you've taken time to go through some of those training camp lessons. They've all been built in a very easily consumable fashion, nothing taking more than 10 minutes to complete. Um, but they're chocked full of, of information that can help you have a successful run and answer a lot of your questions leading up to the tournament. So please spend some time there. And finally, uh, mobile donations, as you can imagine, our site is responsive. It's built in a responsive design, so it scales for mobile. And what's important to note here is that you got a lot of people around the end of the rounds, whether that's a Friday night um, around 8 p.m., trying to help your cause advance, knowing that they can make a contribution on their mobile device or their tablet is great. And once they save their information, it's as simple as coming in and adding the point totals and hitting submit. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible for others to give and what the Brackets for Good tournament's all about. This is how it works. So um, each organization will be matched up against another nonprofit where you will encourage individuals to come and support your cause on the BFG platform. Individuals will score points by donating to your nonprofit where one point equals one dollar donated on the site. Organizations, you'll keep the money regardless of advancement. And at the end of each round, the organization with the most points will advance to the next round. The points reset to zero, so no parent points carry over from round one into round two, and so on. And the organization with the most points will continue on until the championship round, and we crown a champion who will receive an additional cash prize donation from a title sponsor in the market. So although there'll be 13 champions, there's a number of different ways to win. Everybody has a chance to learn something, to employ a new strategy, to gain something out of the Brackets for Good tournament. And that's what we want to talk a little bit more about later in the presentation. But right now, this is a quick snapshot of what one week in one division looks like. Here you see the nonprofit organizations competing head to head. The point totals to the right. Those indicate the number of dollars that those organizations have raised. The dollar sign is how you can add them to your check, your cart to check out and score points for them. Each round lasts one week in duration, except for the semifinal and final rounds, which are cut in half. We'll dive a little bit deeper into the tournament schedule as we go, um, but you will also see a game clock, which certainly helps with a sense of urgency. You'll be able to see the number of days, hours, minutes and seconds remaining in the round for your players to get in and help your cause. So we just mentioned a little bit ago, but there's going to be 13 champions in the tournament, but that doesn't mean that you can't have a winning game plan in 2018's tournament. And we want to spend a little more time talking about what that looks like. So over the years, we've learned a lot of lessons from the nonprofits that have participated, and we want to share some of those different strategies they've used to have them to help them have a winning outcome, regardless of their championship run in brackets for good. One of those things that a lot of organizations have used the tournament for is a marketing experiment. It could be starting a brand new social channel. It could be leveraging social in a different way. Um, there's a lot of different things and tools and resources that could be used that can help further your mission as well on the marketing front. It could be employing text messaging. These different things have added a lot to the nonprofits and kind of helped them learn along the way different lessons that they've employed moving forward. Also, to kind of piggyback off the marketing experiment, first-time donors, we often hear from the organizations that you're concerned um, you may be experiencing some donor fatigue by participating in the tournament, and we hear that loud and clear. Some of the things that organizations have done in the past is leverage their current donors to share on their social outlets, or what we call their tribe, so a number of different folks that they might work with or involved in a church group or just their social network. Um, sharing why they support your organization 
has proven tremendous results. We had an organization here in Indianapolis that did that a couple years ago, raising over $19,000 from first-time donors, and they never ask one of their current supporters to give in the tournament. So it's possible, maybe that's a, an anomaly story, but depending on what you want to leverage the tournament for, employing the right strategy can prove great results. Board engagement, also something that we hear quite frequently, is that their board got really behind the tournament. So everyone's different. Everyone has different interests as far as how they want to view raising funds. But strategy and competition brings out a lot of great things with people, including board members. Some of these board members get ultra competitive when winning and losing is on the line. So um, leverage that to your advantage. There's also some tools and resources in the area in the locker room called referral links. We've seen organizations build teams based around each individual board member where they use referral links and track dollars coming back into the, the organization through their efforts and kind of further gamifying the brackets for good experience internally. Uh, le leadership development. This is something that also we hear often is that there's maybe an up and coming person within the organization that they're looking to step up and take more of a leadership role and Brackets for Good has proved to be a fantastic opportunity to help them cut their teeth. Whether they're leading the charge internally, whether they're running the marketing and uh, strategy campaign externally or a combination thereof, it's really helped pull kind of some leadership elements out of new or employees that you're looking to step up and take more of a prominent role within the organization. Another idea is volunteers. We all need volunteers to help us further our missions. They help provide us with a number of different uh, skills and expertise and just resources that we otherwise wouldn't be able to carry on without. Maybe you have a volunteer who's looking to really step up and get involved and you haven't quite run into the perfect project for them, but they're eager to cut their teeth on something like this. This could be a committee where a volunteer committee runs the project, uh, the campaign in brackets for good, or it could be an individual who runs point on it. Whatever you're looking for there, there's opportunities to engage those free resources and volunteers and get them active, activated behind your cause. Staff morale boost, that's something that uh, we hear about occasionally. Some organizations, as we all know in this space of nonprofits, the nonprofit world and raising funds, it's a very difficult task, has a ton of reward, but sometimes we need to be uplifted by our efforts. And some of that not only comes internally, but starting to watch what these other organizations are doing across the country that are participating in Brackets for Good has really shined a light on this space and shown people that, man, there's a lot of great causes out here doing some incredible work. They're following along with their marketing message. They're learning about these causes and it's reinvigorated individuals who otherwise um, needed a little extra boost into their work and kind of help re-motivating them and re-centering them around their mission and why their work is so important. So we've seen all sorts of great stories come back from staff morale boosts. Corporate partnerships. Um, this year, obviously, rolling out community teammates. We're very focused on this. It was a huge deal in Indianapolis in 2017. It proved great results. If we want to encourage and individuals to discover and learn about nonprofits, what not a better way than to partner up individual nonprofits with a corporate partner? So if you have an existing partner or you're looking to establish a new one, Please leverage the resources that are available to you today. They can help further along one of those relationships that you may be working toward. Nonprofit partnerships. This is amazing. This also goes back to what Jeff was reiterating while we were in the Twin Cities. He was looking for opportunities to partner and partner with other nonprofit organizations. When we think about that, that was something we never thought could happen with Brackets for Good or we just never even knew that that might be a potential outcome of hosting these tournaments, but we've seen it time and time again. We've seen joint fundraising opportunities come out of the pro out of the tournament. We've seen joint programs come out of the tournament. So if there's a way in which you can link arms where maybe you're just kind of both boosting one another up, you have enough of a different mission, but yet you're still benefiting similar parties, what not a great way, a better way than to team up with an organization and carry on a relationship beyond the tournament. Peer-to-peer -peer competition. This is another thing that we've seen pretty frequently and uh, some opportunities to kind of encourage individuals to participate. We've even seen organizations host 
exclusive events for their big time supporters are really fired up about brackets for good. They send out messages that are pretty cryptic, telling people, hey, we want you on our team. If you're available, meet here at this time. Bring your computer with Wi-Fi access. They get there. There's drinks. There's uh, food provided for them and a war room ready to go to help their organization advance in the tournament. So a lot of fun things happening, a lot of peer encouragement that we've seen, and a number of different ways to define your success. And once you define that success, it's going to be really important to get the players involved. And the players are those individuals who are going to support your organization. We refer to any nonprofit leader, any support staff as coaches. You're really out there running point, making sure people know the ins and outs of what you need them to do and how they can best support you in the tournament. And these are the common channels that you would employ to leverage. Um, email. This is one of the things that we've been saying quite frequently now, but if I were in your shoes, one of the first things that I would do if you haven't started down the process of developing your strategy is put together an email, tell people that you've gotten in Brackets for Goods 2018 tournament, and it's a bracket style fundraising competition where one point equals one dollar. The next question I would ask is how do you want to be communicated about the tournament? And the first bullet is, I don't want to be communicated with at all. Please remove me from that list. I want to be communicated weekly. I want to know what's going on with a weekly update. And the final one is, I'm ready to be a part of the team. And there, with one simple email, you've segmented your list. You know who you need to keep in contact with on a weekly basis. And now you have a group that you could maybe put into a text messaging group or leverage in some other way to keep them as an integral part of the team. Reach out to them, find out what skills and resources they have access to that they're willing to help with. So again, a great way to segment your group, your supporters, and find out how you can best leverage them moving forward in the tournament. Social is certainly a big component of the tournament. It doesn't necessarily mean that if you don't have experience that it's going to prove uh, to not be successful for you. We've seen organizations establish their, non their presence on social and tell their story in really effective and, and connecting ways. But this is a real opportunity to highlight individuals who make your organization work, the beneficiaries that you support, the impact that you're having in your cause, and you're all out there recruiting more people to join your team. Use Brackets for Good and the sports play that it brings to the table to get creative on these marketing channels and share your story. And if you're looking for ways in which others have done it in the past, please go to our YouTube channel. We cover, and we're going to do it again this year, the top 10 promotional plays across the tournament. So if you're interested in what other nonprofits have done, to promote their organizations in the tournament, go to our YouTube channel and watch the past videos. They take about two and a half minutes to get through. Obviously, you can search through, search through them, but um, there's a lot of great content out there and how nonprofits have leveraged social to be an effective communication tool for them. Events, something that we've talked a little bit about, but this is a really big deal. I think we started kind of the concept behind viewing parties at the end of the rounds. We all got together and we'd love to watch how the each round would play out. Um, and now we're starting to see a bunch of nonprofits execute these round-end parties. They're getting together with community teammates. They're getting together with their staff. They're celebrating the work that they do and hoping that they can continue their run in fundraising madness. So um, we've seen those events. We've also seen bake sales. We've seen... People show up at one of their corporate partners and pass around a, a jar to collect some extra cash. Anything that you can use to be creative as an event to draw people closer to your mission, we want you to do that. And this is a perfect opportunity to leverage an event for Brackets for Good. Partners, again, we've talked about it a little bit with community teammates. This is an opportunity to forge a new partnership, uh, continue to grow an existing one, but companies have interest in getting their employees activated in the community. Every one of our corporate partners loves to support Brackets for Good because of its impact on multiple causes and because it gives the employees opportunities to support causes that they care about. So I can't stress this enough. Companies are definitely interested. Use the tools that we've provided, reach out, establish some new partnerships, and spread the word across their employee base. 
press this year we've added quite a bit into the nonprofit locker room including press plays we've already seen it prove successful with some organizations starting to get some media hits so there is a template that's available and there's also kind of a little snapshot of how brackets for good is going about pitching media outlets to get additional story angles if you have existing relationships with media uh, media personalities any media outlet that's in your local area feel free to leverage those connections to help generate more awareness for your cause in the tournament. Phone calls, certainly an awesome opportunity to connect with people, thank them for their support, be strategic about who you're reaching out to. If you know your base well enough to know certain individuals are highly competitive, love sports, they may also like this type of fundraiser where an exclusive phone call to them will make them feel important and part of the team. Also, we mentioned something about text messaging, leverage text. We know that 97% of every text message that gets sent gets read. If you're looking to connect people and keep people closer in the loop to what's going on in the tournament, creating groups that you can quickly message back and forth this is a great opportunity to leverage it and see if it's something that can be applied to other fundraising or other initiatives you have coming up beyond the tournament. And finally, mail. We know it can work. Um, some individuals love to receive it. Others, maybe not so much. But um, one of the things that I'll share later is using it as an effective follow-up tool and thanking individuals for their support. Uh, it can be, we all know that it's really effective. So certainly if that's what your constituents are used to and they appreciate, leverage that to the best of your ability. Now it's time to jump into the locker room. So if you're unsure how to get to the locker room, you need to log in with your individual account. Once logged in and selecting the menu, you will see your nonprofit's name. And I'm going to jump into our test account right now and we'll walk through some of the tools and features that are available to you today. First, this is our test locker room. So there's some elements in here that we don't have in some of the uh, live tournament lockers uh, that you all have access to. So I wanted to share with you real quickly that you can upload your image here. This will appear on your stat sheet. It will also appear on your matchup view along with your team color. So on the matchup view, once logged in there, the team color will display and it will also provide a little bit more visual appealing elements that I'm gonna share with you later on. Here we're on the dashboard. So as I scroll down, you can see highlights if we had scored any points, any dollars raised, the number of donations, what our all time score is. So if you've participated in years past in Brackets for Good, you will have a running tally that's available to you here and stat sheet views. Finally, there's summary information listed below. So any donors that have come in and donated, you can see quickly the last handful of donors that have made contributions to you. Coming back up to the top, we're gonna to dive into some of the tools and resources that are at your disposal. One is the roster section. This is how you add additional team members to the nonprofit locker room. And it's simple as adding in an email address and hitting send invitation. We've created a couple of different ideas for you to think about who might make a good fit to join the nonprofit locker room. There's no limitation to the number of people that you can have access to the locker room, but we also want to caution you that there's no limitation also to the amount of access to information they have. So if you don't want an individual to have donor information, do not send them an invite to the nonprofit locker room. Maybe you can take some content out of the locker room and share it with those individuals, but you certainly do not want to provide them access because they will have access to everything. The stat sheet. This is the area where we talked about with the nonprofit views earlier in 2017, having over 150,000 views, but this is where you add your information to your stat sheet. As you can see, we are not practices, practicers of what we preach, and there's good reason for that. Our actual um, uh, stat sheet is not available publicly. If it were, this is what it would look like. As you can see, we've had a little fun with our primary cause that we're in international and foreign affairs and national security. Not quite accurate, but the next one, community improvement and capacity building is certainly what we're about with our mission being to introduce and encourage people to participate in philanthropy. 
Again, we did not practice what we preached. We should have content here in each one of these sections. So this is how individuals will come in and learn about your cause. They'll be able to watch any videos, get in contact with you. They will have access to your social links. And once the tournament goes live, visit website turns into donate now. And the reason I'm going to continue to harp on the, the stat sheet is that once you fill this information out, individuals can click a button to go to the next nonprofit. So they can read very quickly what your organ organization's all about, see what's happening, and see if their values align with what you're doing in the world. Notice there are character limitations as well as image um, limitations that you want to be aware of, but you can easily update any sort of files here take note of the character limits, and once you've completed all the information, you can hit save below and that will update your stat sheet in real time. Donate widget. Um, this is the ability for you as a nonprofit participant to upload or to load some code on your website that will have your current matchup, the game clock, and your opponent with the scores, it will look exactly like this. So you can see right now, there's a countdown to this game clock that is taking place for the Joseph Maley Foundation. And again, this button will turn to donate now. So by embedding this code on your website, you can have an ability for an individual donor to make a donation from your site. They never have to visit bfg.org to do so. So again, another opportunity to just kind of create an op option for people to bump into this tournament, to learn about it and learn about what you're doing and be able to quickly support you is what this is all about. And bank account information. So by March 2nd, we are looking for each organization to add your bank account information into the site. It's basic routing, account number, and check number information. Once that information is saved, it will look just like um, the section up here. You won't be able to see the information. It will indicate that it was submitted on a certain date, but there won't be an ability for individuals to come back in and see what that routing or bank account information was. So that's, and why we need that is because we want to be able to pay you quicker. And this allows us the ability that once you're eliminated for us to transfer funds to you. The help and FAQ section, we are in the process of building out. We um, have some great tools to help us make it even easier to help you. So some of the common questions that we get, we will make FAQs on and you will have access to create or to kind of learn about this information, get your questions answered. Donation section. This section we do not um, currently have access to. We'll show you kind of what it looks like in, the, in a slide later. But the, another important section is the bench point section. So we mentioned something about events. We've talked about the tournament starting for most organizations on March 2nd. Others may have a buy in the first round and theirs may not begin till the 9th. Well, you still have access to start raising funds come March 2nd. And you can do that by raising funds offline. So if you have an event, you're passing around that tip jar, you're running a bake sale, you're selling merchandise, whatever other creative opportunities that you come up with to create dollars that individuals know that those dollars are going to be used in the Brackets for Good tournament can be collected, documented, and converted through bench points. So here is a quick rundown. You can add the point totals in which you are going to submit your nonprofit card, all the billing information, a description of what the event was, any sort of first time donors that you're able to reference through this initiative, and we need actual documentation that the funds were raised. So we need to know when those checks were written. We need images uploaded of the cash raised. It needs to be cash in hand and not pledges. After you submit those, there'll be a 24 hour period before they hit the board. And a final note, there is a submission deadline that you have to adhere to if you wanna leverage bench points moving forward. I can't stress this enough because noon, the day before the round ends, you must have all bench points submitted. 
What that means is you cannot schedule bench points to be the last points that hit the buzzer and your competition not have any chance to respond to these bench points. So noon on the final day of the round, those points will be passed through as long as you've got them submitted before then, uh, the day before the round ends. If you don't and you come back, let's call it Friday, and you try to submit bench points, the section that we are looking at here will actually disappear and you won't see bench points until the next round advances. So please get those points in ahead of time. The playbook section is another area where I'm going to jump into a live area. And the reason I want to do that is to cover a few things. One is community teammates. So since we, our account is not actively involved in a tournament, we don't have the community teammate section, but here's where you can upload the company name and you have access to a little bit more information about what community teammates look like in 2017, the ability to download a flyer and plenty of email templates that you can customize and share in your recruitment efforts to find a community teammate to help you in 2018. Doesn't get much easier than that. If you have questions, we're always available. Emails and social posts. This is how you can reach out and communicate with either your audience, which we defined as board, staff, supporters, based on the timing, before the tournament, during the tournament, or after the tournament, and through a channel, whether that's email or social. So as a quick snapshot of what's here, if I select during the tournament and email for my supporters, I have some information that I can copy and paste or edit however I'd like. Notice here that there is a matchup view as well as a direct donation link. Both of these, view, these links are available below over to the left, but they will take you into your current matchup throughout the tournament. So if you're going to use the current matchup link, you would use it in a context where someone needs to understand a little bit more about this matchup and what the current score and game clock look like. If you have an individual who has a problem donating, what you can do is send them the direct donation link. That will take the individual donor, once selected, into the checkout cart with your organization selected. The only thing that they will need to do is add the point total that they want to score and continue with the checkout process. So you can, as you can see, you can quickly filter through this information to find the exact content you're looking for. Featured partners is just that. These organizations have partnered with Brackets for Good and have exclusive offers for you. If you haven't spent any time here, I highly encourage you to jump in and just see the different opportunities that exist for you, whether that's during the tournament or after the tournament. Logos and graphics, it's pretty simple. This is where you get information or logos about with Champ. You get our logos, you get email banners, you get a ton of graphics that you can use and leverage at your disposal. Next is referral links. This is a section that you can create your own referral codes and track the effectiveness of these codes. The reason we pulled up this account is because as you can see, they broke down three different codes, <clears throat> our referring codes. One they leveraged on their blog, the other they leveraged in email, and another in social. You can see the number of clicks, any new users that have been created, a total number of donations, and the dollars each one of those individual links generated for the nonprofit. So incredible way to further gamify if that's what your goals are or to just track some of the effectiveness of your various outlets. Strategies and inspirations. This is again a section that we've broken up based on your audience and timing. And if you're looking for a different way to up your game, simply by coming in here, we'll highlight different things that you can leverage and point you back to the lessons that you can learn more about on your own on how you can take advantage of these. Press plays, I mentioned this earlier, this is how we go about our um, solicitation of various media outlets. So as you can see, we are in the middle of tournament selections. We've now moved into the tournament tip off. So we're gonna be doing a lot of reaching out to the media outlets and tournament story angles that we pitch from March 2nd all the way to April 6th throughout the tournament run along with some recaps. And here is the section with the template. All you need to do is copy and paste and replace in the different sections that we have highlighted with specific links, your name, 
dollar figures, all sorts of information that you want to share with the media outlets, you can customize it. And training camps. This is one of the most important sections of the nonprofit locker room. This is an ability for you to learn all about brackets for good on your very own time. Each one of these tournament lessons is no longer than 10 minutes. You can go through them as your schedule permits, and it will walk you through the very basics to the most complicated, or I shouldn't say complicated, but the most robust features and strategies that you can employ in Brackets for Good. Finally, let's talk about donation links. We can't stress this enough. This was an area that we wanted to really call out this year. Direct donation links, again, take an individual into the checkout process. Your current matchup view is the matchup of who you're currently competing against with scores and tournament countdown clock. And finally, the tournament link itself links out to the overall tournament. So, we covered a lot of ground there in the locker room. Now, we're going to highlight a couple of other additions that we have in 2018. One of the things that we haven't touched that much on, but is a, a significant component in Brackets for Good, is the idea of buzzer beaters. So, during the checkout process and when the tournament is live, an individual can come in, and we'll just use this as, a, as an example. This individual has chosen to donate $100 to the Domestic Violence Network. As you can see below, they have clicked on the buzzer beater. So they've turned on the buzzer beater, which adds an additional $100 to their total. So now their donation is $200. And what's going to happen once this donation is processed is the first $100 will hit the board immediately upon completing the transaction. The additional $100 will not hit the board until the final, final buzzer sounds. It's a way to schedule a buzzer beater, to schedule a second and equal donation amount that will hit the board for your cause to help give you the extra push to win. Lots of nonprofits use these very effectively, and the reason they do that is it's a further gamification of the tournament itself. Some donors want to help you win but can't come back on those end of the rounds, so this is an opportunity for them to add a little extra push. Also, you will see the number of buzzer beaters you have been uh, that have been donated to you, but you will not know the total do dollar amounts, just like you don't know if a buzzer beater is going to go in or if it's going to hit the front end or back end of the rim. It's the same idea with buzzer beaters. We are a nonprofit ourselves, so every transaction that comes through, we automatically tax receipt the individual. So we recognize this as a donation to us and then distribute those funds back out to you. The reason we're structured that way and set up that way is so you can spend your time fostering your relationships with your donors. And what donation information will you receive? Just like we shared in kind of the highlight area of the donor profile information, I'm sorry, the, uh, the donor recap information, here's a complete list of the donor information you're going to receive. So not only the amounts and the dates and times and basic contact and demographic information, but you're also going to have access to a memo line, which we've seen people use in very creative ways. One way I want to highlight is last year we gave my daughter, who is four, $100 and ask her what organization she would like to support. She chose children's organizations. So in the memo line, I indicated that my four-year-old is choosing to support and help kids in the tournament. She donated to eight different causes. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because it's a perfect marrying of nonprofit, uh, of the donor stewardship that can happen and the connection that you can make as an organization by taking advantage of the data that we share. Three organizations reached out and thanked us for those donations. Three of the eight. One sent an email. Two mailed us thank yous with images and a handwritten note to my daughter. I watched her face light up as a four-year-old when I read those notes to her and shared those images with her. And believe it or not, they are still next to her bed. She sleeps right next to those pictures. So if they mean that much to a four-year-old, you can imagine what they mean to an, an adult who really cares about your cause and that you're looking to develop a, a longer-term relationship with. Again, we're going to talk real briefly about bench points. 
Bench points, again, are those events, cash jars, any sort of creative fundraising opportunity that you can do offline. You document those funds, you put them on the nonprofit credit card, and there's a 24-hour approval process to have those donations hit. The other thing I wanted to highlight, again, is the deadline for the submission. Just so you know, it is noon the day before the final round. Get those bench points in or they will not count in the tournament and in the round itself. Last year, we unveiled free throws. Free throws are free money. It's real money that our sponsors or Brackets for Good puts up to incentivize behavior. A few things that we're doing this year with free throws that we're excited about that you can earn them through interacting with sponsors, learning about nonprofits, and sharing your participation in the tournament with your other with others that um, you have connections with. And we've made it even easier to identify where those dollars are. So what's coming is a new header that will highlight any free throw codes or any free throw points that you have earned. And during the donation process, you don't have to donate any dollars for Music for All. As you see, there are two points available for this individual who could contribute those all to Music for All currently check out without having to add any additional dollars to it. It's a great way to incentivize individuals to come in, learn about your cause, and support your organization without them having to open their pocketbook. So another example of what free throws look like, a partner has put up $1,000, the public comes in, they learn about this partner, they go ahead and proceed to check out as the partner is giving them $2 for spending some time to learn about them, and the $28 has been redeemed by 14 people. Community teammates, once you add a community teammate, this is the section that you will see them in. The area that we've got highlighted here is the matchup view. These are the team colors we were talking about. So all those different elements that we discussed in the locker room have now come to life here. So you can see how these points are gonna be broken down. It's kind of a fun little chart to see how organizations raise funds. And now you can see the brand visibility that your community teammate will receive in 2018. New this year is a partnership with CRF where we are putting up a donation hotline. We know we've got those individuals who are still scared of the internet and not wanting to put any of their information out there, even though it probably already exists. This is a way that they can call into a hotline at 855-726-7327 from Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and Sunday, 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and make a donation for your organization. And there is a difference in convenience fee. Our fee for the last three years has been 4.7% plus 30 cents. That's inclusive of the credit card processing for any donations that are made on bfg.org. Since we have this partnership with CRF and there are individuals behind these phone donations, there is a different fee associated with phone contributions. That is 7% plus 30 cents. Know the difference, certainly an option, but you need to know how much those fees are based on how you want to play the game in 2018. The new game flow that's coming, we highlighted just briefly what the matchup view looks like. This is getting an overhaul, and what we're really thrilled about is that you can zoom in and see kind of minute by minute, hour by hour, how these organizations play the tournament itself. It's going to give you great insight into how your competition is stacking up for round two, if you're lucky enough to advance, and see how they played in that first round. Did they go off on an early run? Are they scoring points in bunches? Are they waiting to the very end to score their points? All of this detailed information is now going to be graphically displayed. It's really cool and exciting to experience fundraising in this level. If you don't know where any of this information is, it's in your nonprofit locker room. It's in your nonprofit locker room. It's in your nonprofit locker room. Please go, jump in there, jump into training camps, dig around. And finally, um, this is the game schedule. So, if your tournament is scheduled to start on the 2nd, we begin at 8 p.m. where donations can be accepted online. Each round will last a week in duration, except for the semifinal round, which we call the Philanthropic Four. So on March 30th, that round will be cut in half. We'll go from March 30th to April 3rd at 8 p.m. And then April 3rd to April 6th, 
is the championship round where we will crown the 13 champions of Brackets for Good 2018. We are here to help. We say with Brackets for Good all the time that we are an extension of your team and we truly believe that. These tools, these resources, these corporate partners that we work tirelessly to uh, identify and work with all want to see you have success in the tournament and we want to see you have success in the tournament. No matter what success, how you define it, we're here to support that. And the ways you can get in touch with us are through email, phone, live chat, and we're even available for some one-on-one -on -one strategy sessions if you need it. We just want you to know we want you to have success in this tournament, whatever that looks like for you. So, thank you for spending time with us today. We got down a little early, which I'm pumped up about. We have a lot of great questions coming in on chat still. Um, we're going to go ahead and lead this up. So if anyone wants to ask some additional questions, we can get to those. The other thing that I wanted to say is that we will, we have screencast this. We'll record it and cut it down a little bit and share um, some more information on our, on our highlight reel. And we also want to open it up for questions. And I know that we have some questions about community teammates. One of the things I failed to do at the start of this presentation was share that Rachel Proviance is also with me. Uh, she helps me kind of organize some of this information that's coming through, and we want to touch on some of that now. So we had a question about community teammates. We need to know a little more. Is that what's going on, Rachel? Yeah, for sure. Um, we had some people bring um, in some questions about community teammates. One of the most popular ones we've been getting lately is... Can you have more than one community teammate? And you know what? When we dreamed up the idea of community teammates, we didn't think that that was going to get that far. But, hey, we love it. Um, you can absolutely have more than one community teammate. The site only allows to have one logo up at a time. So get creative. You can switch the logos out every couple days or once a week. Um, or if you want to get super techie and use a photo editor tool or software to merge a couple logos into one and upload one image, you can do that as well. Yeah, just be careful because some brands have some sensitivity there into what happens with their logo. So just know your partner. Um, make sure that they're okay with something like that. We've even had people ask us, can we sell a community teammate? Of course, this is a fundraiser. We would love for you to raise some additional funds. And if you can do that through community teammates, what not a better way than to go ahead and, and sell an opportunity to put someone's logo there. Um, another thing that we got asked is about the Lids High Five, uh, which is a great question. And one of the things that we didn't quite touch on here, but I know we've we've touched on it during the National Pep Rally and a partnership that we've developed with Lids, which is a local Indianapolis company, um, in exchange for completing a donor profile on Brackets for Good, they are giving individuals $5 to donate back to their favorite cause. And one of the things I'll do right now is I'll just jump in and show you what that looks like through my personal account. Um, here I'm in my donor profile and as you see, I'm actually under edit my account. So there's a description here of what you need to do, which is fill out this information. So there, there's some basic information about me, ways to get in contact with me, address, my demographic information, causes I care about, how was I introduced to your cause. Um, how, and finally, in order to receive the five free throw dollars, you need to opt in to receive some information from LIDS. Once you do that and hit save, as you can see, I already have five dollars to donate. And the next time I log back into my locker room, I will also see below that I have a five free throws available. So again, we mentioned something about the header changing. So very soon, once the tournament goes live, that number is going to be very prominent in the top of the, the header for me. So I'm going to know that those are available and uh, make it as visible as we possibly can. Any other questions that we've had, Rachel, that um, we need to continue to address? I don't believe so. I believe Mr. McIntyre has been our 
front man on support and questions in our little chat bubble we've got over here. Yeah. <laughs> V73, he's handling all of them. So that's great. Thanks, Mac. We greatly appreciate you jumping in there. Um, we'll go ahead and copy the chat as well. We had a lot of people ask the last time if we were going to indeed copy the chat and, and display that so people could go back and, and review the questions and answers that have been submitted and we'd be more than happy to do that so we'll certainly share that information out and uh is that about it are we kind of wrapped up i think i think we're wrapped perfect <laughs> well thanks for your help rachel greatly appreciate it and thank you all for joining uh learning a little bit more about brackets for good we're here to help we want to see you guys have a successful tournament in 2018 and we just can't thank you enough for believing in Brackets for Good and, and jumping in to be a participant in Fundraising Madness. And the madness is about to begin, so... It's about to begin. Are <laughs> you ready? Are you ready, Matt? I don't know. I don't know. I think so. Some days I think so, and other <laughs> days I don't know. Uh, but I'm very excited about it and can't wait to see what happens. So good luck to you all. Uh, thanks again for your time. And please don't hesitate to reach out to us if we can help you. Take care.